Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and today we're going to look at question 5 from the Step 1 uh, Mathematics paper, and so let's just get straight on with it. Uh, it says, write down the most general polynomial of degree 4 that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by these different factors, so the math here is the factor and the remainder theorem, but done in a slightly more advanced way. So, certainly if I had a polynomial that was like x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, times x minus 4, then if I divided this by any of the factors, uh, it would divide exactly, right? Um, so this would leave remainder 0. Um, now, this isn't quite the most general thing that leaves remainder 0, because I could also multiply it by a constant, it would still leave remainder 0. So if I want to leave remainder 1 instead, I just need to add 1 to this, and I get the answer to the first part uh, of the question here. Okay. Right, so first part really here is meant to be something you can just write down straight away if you're fluent in that theory. Okay, uh, part two says, okay, uh, now the polynomial p of x has degree n greater than or equal to 1, and has p of 1 is p of 2 all the way up to p of n is 1. So this is actually saying something very similar to the first part, right, you know, p of 1 equal to 1 by the remainder theorem is the same thing as saying if it's divisible by, so if it's, if it's divided by x minus 1, it leaves a remainder of 1. So it's now saying, okay, you know, instead of, um, you know, inst instead of uh, just uh, going up to 4 here, this polynomial p of x is uh, going to have x minus 1, x minus 2, all the way up to x minus capital N plus 1. Okay, and it says, show that p of n plus 1 is not equal to 1. So if I took uh, capital N plus 1 here and substituted it in, okay, so I've still got the k, of course, if I put n plus 1 in here, I get n plus 1 minus 1. So this is k times n, uh, and then this is going to be uh, n minus 1, etc. I'll keep going until I get down to the end here, and the last uh, term will be n plus 1 minus 1 will be 1, right? Okay, so, so actually... Uh, oh, and I've still got the plus 1 here, of course. So this is just k times uh, n factorial plus 1. So, uh, why does that mean that p of n plus 1 is not equal to 1? Well, um, it must be that k times n factorial is, is not 0. Uh, now, uh, why is that? Well, um, okay, actually, I suppose here... If this polynomial has degree n, um, it must also be here that k is not equal to 0. Okay. Um, if k was 0, then this would just be the constant 1. So k is not 0, and of course n is not 0, because n is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so k and n are both not 0. Okay, so it must be that k n factorial is not 0, and so k n factorial plus 1 can't be equal to 1 then. And that was exactly what we've just said is p n plus 1. Right, the next part, it says, given now that p uh, n plus 1 equals 2, uh, find a p n plus r where r is a positive integer. And we'll carry on to the second part in a second. Okay, so if p n plus 1 is 2, well, same thing uh, we've, we've got here. So p n plus 1 is still given by this formula, so we'd have to have that uh, k times n factorial plus 1 is equal to 2, right, so k n factorial is 1, so that constant k must be 1 over n factorial. Uh, so we'd have then that p uh, of n plus r, well the constant in, in, in here is, in the front here, is going to be 1 over n factorial, and then my first term here is going to be n plus r minus 1, and then n plus r minus 2, okay, and then I will do dot 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 until I get to the last term, and that's going to be n plus r minus r, sorry, minus n, sorry, which just gets me down to r. You could write this with uh, factorial notation if you want to. Um, so, uh, so that's that. Okay. Um, 
I mean, in fact, to me, maybe it's slightly more precise to write this as uh, using factorial notation. So I've got 1 over n factorial, and the thing on the top here would be something like uh, n plus r minus 1 factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial. Uh, and in fact, when you do that, uh, you could also say that that's equivalent to uh, n choose r minus 1 as well, which is. Um, uh, a nice efficient notation here to express that neatly. Okay, um, uh, I suspect if you re if you get this far, you're going to get um, all of the marks, or at least most of them. Um, so, uh, so that's that. Now it says find a positive integer r independent of n such that p n plus r equals n plus r. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to stick just with uh, this notation here. So p of n plus r equals n plus r, that then would imply that, okay, 1 over n factorial times n plus r minus 1, n plus r minus 2, all the way up to r. Um, oh, I've missed out uh, the plus 1 in this as well, haven't I? So actually, um, so actually there's a plus 1 throughout here as well. So actually I would get, I'd get a plus 1 in here as well. Okay, so uh, so I have to have all of that plus 1 is equal to n plus r and so I could subtract the 1 from both sides here and then I could also divide through by n plus r minus 1 on both sides so we can get rid of this factor and I'd just be left with 1 on this side of course you should write this out as several steps in a, in a real uh, uh, exam situation um, and now I look at this and say, okay, let's multiply through by the n factorial as well. So I've got n minus n plus r minus two, then you know, the next one will be n plus r minus three, etc., all the way down to r has to be equal to n factorial. And you can kind of just eyeball this and say, okay, is there a value of r that is going to make this work? Well, okay, this looks like a product of you know a similar number of terms that n factorial has in it. Um, if I tried to make the first, if I, so if I thought of n factorial as just n times n minus 1, etc., all the way down to 1. Then, uh, if I try to make n plus r minus 2 the same as n, so I take r equals 2, and then here I just get n times n minus 1, and I end at 2, well, that is the same as what I have on the other side here, because, you know, all I've got, all I've got on the uh, right-hand side here is just an extra times 1, so, I mean, uh, so that makes it work. Okay, so r equals 2 is the answer to, to that part of the question. Right, um, moving on then to part 3. Uh, so it says uh, we've got a polynomial here of degree 4 and the integer coefficients and the coefficients, uh, so it has integer coefficients and its x to the 4 coefficient is 1 and it satisfies this thing, s of a is s of b is s of c is s of d is 2001. So we've got something pretty similar to the first part of the question. Um, so this polynomial s of x, it must be equal to uh, x minus a times x minus b times x minus c times x minus d plus 2001. And because we're told the uh, x to the 4 coefficient is 1, I don't have to have worry about a constant in front of it. Um, and you know we're just basically applying the remainder theorem again, but with two thousand and one instead of one this time. Okay, and uh, these a, b, c, and d are all distinct, but not necessarily positive integers. That's a key hint for this question there. Uh, and uh, they're not necessarily positive. I mean, is it is a key hint? Um, distinct is just a very important part of the question. Um, so. So there is no integer e such that s of e equals 2018, right? Well, okay, so let's just see what happens if I put in uh, s of e equals 2018. So I'd have e minus a, e minus b, e minus c, e minus d plus 2001 equals 2018. So again, if I subtract the 2001 from each side here, I'm just going to get equals 17 instead. Right, so so this problem now just jumps into a totally different sort of maths, right? This is now about uh, factors of 17, right? Because um, if a, b, c, and d 
and E are all integers, then I've got four integers on the left here, and A, B, C, and D means they're distinct, it's basically saying, can I write 17 as a product of four distinct integers, right? So, uh, now 17 is prime, of course, so the only factors I've got to play with are 1 and 17. Um, you know, so this is, in a sense, this is the only factorization. But of course, it does say we can use negative values, right? So, I of course, I could also times this by, uh, you know, I could do minus 1 times minus 17, say, and then times it by 1, and that would also work. So I've got three distinct integers now. But I've really run out of factors now. Okay, so, um, so the only factors, you know, here, uh, so we have to just say here, so the only factors are 1, 17, minus 1, and minus 17. And of course, I can't, you know, you know, we can't uh, multiply all of those together to get 17. I'd get 17 squared. Um, so, uh, so this one's not. So this one's not possible. You probably, you might want to write this out a little, uh, a little more than I'm doing because I'm also speaking the answer. Okay. Um, now, in part B, it says find the number of ways this, that the distinct integers a, b, and c, c and d can be chosen such that s of zero equals 2017, and a is less than b is less than c is less than d. Okay. So, s of zero. That uh, would be 0 minus a, 0 minus b, etc. So I'm just going to end up with uh, a, b, c, d uh, plus 2001. And that's going to, in this part, have to be equal to 2017. So that means I'm going to get a, b, c, d equals 2000, and sorry, just 16, subtracting the 2001. Now, Factors of 16, okay, uh, we can think about now. Obviously, 16 is a power of 2, so the only factors we've got are, I'm going I'm to say plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 16, okay. Um, so effectively, you know, by the argument in part A here, um, you know, no combinations exist for distinct A, B, C, and D, where they're all different, uh, including 16, right? Because, again, I'd have to, I'd just have exactly the same problem, right? I'd have to do, you know, I've got 16, and the only things I can multiply them by are 1 or minus 1, so I can do 16 times 1 times minus 1, and then I'm stuck, right? I mean, I, so I'm not going to make it. Um, but uh, let's have a look at ones that include... Uh, 8, and see if we could do anything here, right, or uh, I suppose by 8 I mean plus or minus 8, and here plus or minus 16 as well. So um, so I could do 8 times 2 times 1 times 1 in some sense, if I can sort some minuses out. So I'm going to have to make one of these ones minus, otherwise they're not going to be distinct. Um, and then I've got a choice, I can either make the 8 minus or the 2 minus, right? So I've got 8 times 2 times minus 1 times 1, or I've got 8 times minus 2 times minus 1 times 1. And that gives me two possibilities there. Um, possibilities that include, uh, okay, so so now things that um, don't, I suppose here, I, uh, don't include the 8, okay? So, uh, so not including the 8 plus or minus 8 or, or plus or minus 16 uh, we could do uh, well I've got I could do 4 times 4 times 1 times 1 with some plus or minuses in it so I'd have to make one of the 4's a minus and one of the 1's a minus and actually we can see that's the only way we can do that if we want those to be distinct um, I could also do 4 times 2 times 2 times 1 in some combination Right, so uh, so again, I could have say minus four and minus two. Um, and that would be one way that it would work. I could have the minus four and a minus one. Could I actually no? Because then I would have two twos. So actually, you know, one of the twos here really has to be has to be a minus, and. 
the only way I can the other way I can do it then is not to make the four a minus but to make the one a minus. Okay. And then we can see there's no other ways of doing it. You know, we can't. Uh, you know, two times two times two times one is is clearly not possible because you know I'd have to have uh, again. You know, if I put a minus on one of the twos, I've still got two plus twos, so so we can't do that. Okay, so I think I've done this rigorously and exhaustively, so we found them all, and it just says it wants uh, a is less than b is less than c is less than d, and the only reason it said that is so that we don't have to enumerate all the different orderings, right? Otherwise, you know, if I didn't have to put, the, you know, otherwise, you know, I could have minus eight, two, minus one, one as a possibility for a, b, c, d, and then I could also have two, minus one, one, minus eight, doesn't want to make us write all those things out. But I think for completeness, I'm going to say the possibilities for a, b, c, and d uh, are listed, and I'll list them in order, uh, as they've as they've asked for that as a particular thing, so minus two, minus one, one and eight uh, is that one. Uh, this one here is minus one, sorry minus eight, uh, minus one, one and two. So this is A B C D. This one is minus four, minus one, one four. Um, this one is minus four, uh, minus two. 1, 2, and this one is minus 2, minus 1, 2, and 4. So there we go, we're done. So kind of interesting question, question that starts off looking like it's something to do with algebra and actually uh, turns out to be more to do with number theory towards the end. This is what we get in step, you know, they're looking for a mastery of the techniques of A-level, but also of your creativity and problem solving as you go about the problems. So I hope that was useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll put all these in a playlist so uh, you can see them all in a convenient place and I will see you in the next video.